بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ گڈ آفٹرنون اینڈ گڈ ایوننگ ویلکم ٹو مائی اسٹوو اینڈ آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ اے بی ٹوڈے ان آور سیشن وی ہیو اے ویری انسپائریشنل پرسنالٹی ایز یوزول ہر نیم از شیف سلما ظاہر She is originally from Pakistan, but currently uh, residing in Canada for several years. Uh, Salma is the member of the parliament for Scarborough Center in Canada. Um, her activities have been strongly advocating to promote multiculturalism, humanitarian rights, uh, especially for the minority groups. Uh, she is an uh, MBA from Qaeda Azam University in Pakistan, Masters in Education, Management and Administration from London, UK. Uh, so she's also a recipient of the Diamond Jubilee model for community services. So uh, today we have two giveaways. One is by our generous chef. She is going to give a 30 minutes of free virtual session to the winner. Uh, and it's going to be based on how to get into politics related to politics. Uh, if you want to have your voice in the community, it's very important for us to get in politics, right? And the other one is by Marjan uh, Botanicals. Uh, join them on Facebook by Marjan Botanicals and on Instagram at Marjan Botanicals. M-A-R-J-A-N-B-O-N-A-T-I-C-A-L-S. Uh, they have two giveaways today, um, which is Safeda Soap and Care at Work Herbal Moisturizer. A uh, brand is 100% natural hair, skin products, handmade, manufactured in Pakistan using healing herbs found in the Binabbi, Ayurvedic and ancient Chinese medicine. So follow them. They also have their website, which is www.marjanbotanicals.com slash pk. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's welcome our generous Uh, and inspirational sh- inspirational chef Salma Zahid Tata Assalamu alaikum <laughs> Wa alaikum assalam khush aamadeed khush aamadeed how are you Salma I am good how are you Amna We are good alhamdulillah and so glad to have you on my stove we truly appreciate that thank you We need people like you inspirational people right everybody needs some inspiration in their lives No, no, thanks for hosting me and uh, I think it's uh, great to be on something like that uh, other than politics, discussing uh, something about um, day-to-day life and uh, sharing some recipes. I think it's a great way to promote diversity. Yes, it is indeed. And it's more than just cooking, sharing your recipes. Uh, we are thinking outside the box too, to promote tolerance, respect uh, and... Um, love and peace globally this is what this group is all about so more the merrier okay let me just uh, um, acknowledge our participants they're very active and very curious so let's see we have shivana asim from ireland hello from ireland we have zamir hassan uh, our chef in the past salam anika javed hello from dubai our prestigious chef in the past so here malik beautiful in yellow thank you so here in uk Uh, Anika Javid looking lovely in, in yellow. Thank you so much. This is actually light green. This is March. So I'm trying to wear uh, green uh, for this month. Uh, Anika Javid. Okay. This is Amir Hassan from Florida. Uh, Anna Mirza. Aisha Latif uh, from uh, Bindi. Uh, Zamir Hassan, your program's a big fan, Amuji. Zamir Uncle from Florida. Yes, Uncle, you are a big support and participant. Thank you so much. We cherish that. Tariq Yusuf Mirza, Assalamu Alaikum. Um, mashallah, good to see you here. We have Tahmina Jawinda. Uh, hello from New Jersey. 
love your show thank you so much guys so we are going to acknowledge as we go along okay so salma uh, let me share this with our audience we go a long way we, long, long we spent <laughs> a long long way right yeah. we spent our childhood in pakistan military academy kakul abbottabad where our fathers were stationed our our great you know strong army men our fathers they were stationed and we have made such beautiful memories together and thanks to um the social media that you know and to our relatives you know my brother uh, that uh, uh, Khwaja Heda Latif, that you know, we uh, reconnected after millions of years ago. After millions of it years, seems a and long still, time, we are, yeah. it's a long time, and still, we are on the same page. It's unconditional friendship. This is what it is. And it's hard no, to no, find. I really days. cherish the time which we spent uh, together in uh, Kakul, uh, Pakistan. I didn't, uh, uh, my father was posted there from 1980 to 1983. That was his last uh, term at Pakistan Military Academy in his service. Uh, he has served in Pakistan Military Academy for many different assignments, but uh, this one from 1980 to 83. When my father was the DOS uh, director of studies and your father was the commandant of Pakistan Military Academy, I think uh, it was a great time, great memories of the childhood. And uh, I always share those with my kids. And I was uh, telling them that, uh, inshallah, whenever your mom, my uh, younger brother, is in army, so I said, whenever he is posted to PMA, we are going to go and visit <laughs> because it has been a long time I have not visited. PMA. I think the last one was um, when Abdullah, my brother, got commission. So, Mashallah, that, look at him. <laughs> yeah, it has been He's an army years officer years. now. I don't know where did the time go. It was a golden, yes. it was certainly a golden era. And we had beautiful, beautiful, uh, we had made some beautiful memories, which we are going to cherish for the rest of yeah. our lives. No, it was I, a different uh, era, different times, different uh, type of friendship which is very hard to find these days. Our mothers were great friends. Our, My mother our, always our parents used to talk. were very good. They connected. Yeah. Our parents connected. It was more like a family thing. Always. I was very was little though then. By her. Yes, yes. But I was inspired by all of you. Um, but, you know, it's, it's so good to have you. Couldn't believe that after so many years I'll be doing a show and you are going to be my host. And look at you. You are the, the member of the parliament in Scarborough. What an achievement. What an, achie an honor uh, for the, the Pakistani community. Yeah, I don't know, with all the ups and downs. And uh, we immigrated to Canada in 1999. So it has been a long journey. But uh, I think, uh, touch wood, I'm very lucky where I am today. And uh, Allah has been very kind to us yes uh, absolutely and we have all you have all our support okay so we have uh, naima halim naima halim uh, she is from lahore founder of marjan botanicals she is the one who's giving these generous uh, uh, skincare products guys do go on her website it, she has amazing stuff i have already become her number one fan um, and uh, she is giving the giveaway uh, to um, the, the participant in Pakistan only, but she ships all over the world to Canada, UAE, USA, all right? Just because of the shipping, she is giving the giveaway to somebody who resides in Pakistan. All right, so let's dive into our questions and answers. We are going to keep it short. Uh, what made you get into politics? Uh, when we immigrated to Canada, actually, because my elder son was, I have two sons, mashallah, uh, 22 and 20 year old. So when we came to Canada, the elder one was just one year old. So I decided to be a stay home mom until uh, uh, like these kids start school and the second one was born in 2000. So as you know, uh, my father has been a teacher in Pakistan Army yes. and love for education was always there. Yes. So I've been part of the, uh, in the school, which he started after his retirement. So mm -hmm. education has always been my passion. And uh, I think uh, the values with which I was brought up, education was always very like important thing in our family. So 
when I came to Canada as a mother, when my elder son started going to school, I got involved in the school council. So, and then the principal, after two, three meetings, said to me that, would you like to become the chair of the school council? I said, yeah, why not? Uh, whatever I can do in my capacity as a parent and be a liaison between the parents and the teachers, I love doing that. So I became the chair. And uh, back in 2002, uh, the there were some cuts uh, happening in the schools uh, in Ontario here. The conservatives were in power. So I got a letter from the school that my son's full day kindergarten will be changed to half day kindergarten. So I went to the principal. I said, this is not something we came here to Canada. Right. And uh, I've always been vocal about this. So yeah. he said, I'm not knowing anything about the Canadian political process and how it works and which uh, level of government is responsible. So the principal said it is the provincial government. I cannot do anything. I'm just obeying the orders received from the Ministry of Education. So if you want to complain, you have to go to your member of provincial parliament. So in Canada, we have three levels of government, municipal, mm -hmm. provincial and federal. Uh, education is provincial uh, jurisdiction. So I searched and uh, went to see my MPP uh, where I used to live in Toronto Centre. And uh, there, those days I used to have a double stroller. And I walked into his office with two toddlers in a, a stroller. And I said, this is not something we came. And uh, I think it's important that you look into why these cuts are happening. So he said, I'm in opposition, but I can help you present a petition. So yes. I became, uh, I started a petition in the school, talked to the parents that this is something we need to bring before the government. I was part of some protests happening at Queen's Park. And so I got to know the member of provincial parliament. I worked with him on this. And uh, then in 2003, he called me one day and he said, would you like to work at my constituency office? I said, uh, my younger son is Why not, not at school. Uh, he's not at school as yet. I say, he said that uh, I had a very di different impression about Pakistani women, but uh, you are very different. But uh, you can, I think it would be great if you work as a constituency assistant at my office. So Now the Pakistani women have changed drastically. <laughs> So they are no so more I what said, they were several years ago. I said, ago. okay, that is, yeah, I said, okay, that is fine. I think I yes. can start uh, part-time. Earlier, actually, I was planning when the kids start going to school, I will do a teaching certificate here and enter into teaching in Canada because my master's is in educational management and administration from UK. So that was my plan. But then I started working. I got a job and I started working at his constituency office. So dealing with the constituents, their people hearing about their day to day life, the issues which they have in life, I think. Uh, started uh, to uh, like uh, provoke something to you. that I think this is something uh, which is very close to my heart and if I can do anything for the grassroots people. Uh, so I, I was a staff uh, at uh, provincial government for many years. Then yes. in 2013, I started thinking that federally there is an opportunity here in Scarborough. So why not uh, throw my name in the hat? Because at that time, back in 2013, I felt that the federal government, the voice of my community was not heard. So I threw my name in the hat. And I think starting the work at the MPP's office was a stepping stone for me to develop love for politics and uh, for the grassroots people. So that brought me into politics. and. Uh, I won the Liberal ticket in 2014, became the candidate, official candidate of the Liberal Party. And uh, then uh, in the 2015 election, I won the seat. So <laughs> here I am. Yeah, I have won two federal elections. So this is my second mandate. So you have answered quite a few questions, actually, of mine. And uh, it's just that, you know, anything you do, you have to be passionate and true about it. And it seems like, and this all, it seems like that you really enjoy what you do, and you want to advocate for the people who are oppressed or the minorities who, whose voices are not heard. So uh, there has to be a leader. Somebody has to take that initiative. We all talk. We all want to have good, prestigious jobs, but that's just for our own selves, unfortunately. So, but you have stepped, uh, like you know, ten steps ahead. I would say, like. 20 to 30 steps ahead from everybody, most of the people, to do something for the community. And you have proven it. I Actions speak louder than uh, simply, you know, your words. 
life as a politician is not easy i think uh, you need to enjoy this because it's not a 9 to 5 job it's a 24 7 job and uh, believe you me most of the i i shouldn't quote but most of the people they get into politics just to get power and light but there are very few politicians like yourself who are true to their commitment and i wish that if we have most of the people like you especially in our country um uh, in pakistan i think that would be great i mean right now we have prime minister imran khan and we have a huge respect for him have you ever thought of um, getting into politics um uh, in pakistan because we need was, people like you in <clears throat> pakistan not the limelight people i, 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 I don't think so if, I, if i was in pakistan i don't think so i would have entered into politics maybe in pakistan i think politics is considered to be a dynasty of some families or some people the grassroots people i think now it has changed there in pakistan also and i see some grassroots people coming along but uh, i think in canada and especially our uh, prime minister justin trudeau when he became the leader of the liberal party he said that i will not appoint candidates the grassroots people will be provided the opportunity to elect their own uh, candidates so i think that was uh, something very encouraging and uh, which started my thought process and i said that yes i am willing to work hard i've never been scared of working hard i think I can this tell. is something which i think you are always hard working i remember my parents uncle so was very hard father well so he was never scared of uh, hard work or anything uh, yes uh, and hard work shows something for the yeah. people so i think that was uh, something which uh, was uh, very important to be here where i am today and also the in order to uh, run for politics i think it's very important they should encourage candidates from the masses who live yeah. within Uh, that society that community who have grown up in that community because they'll be able to educate more rather than people who are living in luxurious homes and you know they have all the privileges in the world so um i'm very lucky that we are in uh, canada because uh, in canada people from all parts of the world have come home and yes. they have called canada is their home the riding which i represent i represent over 110000 people of cargo center mashallah, in ottawa mashallah they, what they an are achievement from different they are from different parts of the world uh uh any way you name uh, people would you can find them in scarbro center so i think it is really very important for our next generation uh, our young girls from our community to see that someone like them is sitting in the house of commons representing them because i think that perspective is very much needed in the canadian politics i love it uh, selma though you know i am not at all a political person nor i am that knowledgeable but and i had not prepared for this uh, spontaneous conversation because it's like a a live show but i feel that if you are running for a candidate you have to be confident about your heritage about who you are because i feel that there are many people who hide who don't take the pride to be from pakistan so then don't expect that you will win you know so uh, i feel that it's very important that you need to advocate and stand for what you are and believe in that this is the beauty about canada that you can practice your religion your culture and at the same time you live together as canadians so yes. uh, when i became the member of parliament and i had lots of mosques in my riding i have lots of uh, churches temples uh, yes. in my riding people from different faiths are there so yes when i met different people see something common which i found in them was their desire for a better future for their next generations i think yes. that is something very common in everyone, everyone so absolutely in, in my own in my own writing i have started a multi faith council where i brought together all the leaders of the religious organizations and we yes. did a lot of things together we hosted uh, iftar at a church we hosted a christmas dinner uh, yes. at a mosque so yes. we tried to bring people together we have done a multi faith walk explaining people that okay what different religions teach i think everyone tells us to be it's a good religion it's beautiful because all the religions are beautiful there's no religion that teaches hatred you know all the religions they teach peace love tolerance 
Patience, so, and it's tolerance. okay. It's okay if you practice different. You're not from the same faith, but just be respectful towards each other and let everybody practice what they are practicing. So that okay. Is really, very important. And, Isn't it? Uh, right? I think mm -hmm. voice of every community has to be heard. Uh, and uh, the uh, we are trying to build a more inclusive and diverse Canada, although we have come a long way. But yes. still, there is a lot more work to be done. I was the first woman uh, in hijab to speak from the floor of the House of Commons. And you look so beautiful in hijab. That's Masha. very encouraging for many young girls yes. in our society. Yes. That yes. they can. I mentor a lot of uh, you know. You need to have a lot kids. of courage to do that. But yeah, they, they shadow did it. <laughs> as my in my life as a member of parliament and i met, mentor a lot of young girls and when some people come for advice i always tell them be positive be willing to work hard and dream big you can achieve yes. anything anything right okay so i'm going to skip to the other questions all right because i have to look at the time too and you have given a good nice summary uh, but just a last question, but really like, you know, in one sentence, just answer me that if you become the PM of Canada, the prime minister, how would you lead your country in terms of cultural diversity? Becoming a prime minister, I don't look right now. <laughs> I love the job. Which <laughs> Who I knows? Uh, There's but, always a starting point. Yeah, but uh, as a member of the Liberal Party of Canada, um, I am very proud uh, that uh, the Liberal Party is the a party of Charter of Rights and Freedom in Canada. And the Charter of Rights and Freedom dictates that regardless of who you are, from where you came, regardless of the color of your skin, you are all Canadians and you have all the rights yes. to do what you want to do. Excellent. So I think this is the Canada we all need to uh, build together. Beautiful. Okay. So Rakshanda Nakwi is here. Assalamu alaikum. And Zamir Hassan is saying, we need you in US. I would uh, would to have you, would love to have you, my neighbor. And it is hot here in, Phil in Florida. Visit, but I love where I am. I, I love Canada. <laughs> okay. So what are we cooking, Salma? Now, oh, after Abba. no matter you are, you are the PM, whatever you are, but in the end, you are a mother. You're a woman. <laughs> and right <laughs> in front yeah. of the stove, the stove and the woman goes hand in hand together. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, but now the men should also be in front of the stove. Last many times years are changing. Very, last many years have been very busy. So yeah. I hardly used to cook, maybe just on the weekend if I used to get time. But in the last one year during the COVID, this is the positive yes. thing which I see that I've been able to cook a lot. Yes. So my kids love. Uh, to uh, try different mm -hmm. types of dishes so so what are we cooking today so today i will share with you uh, the recipe uh, for peri peri chicken yes okay. I've, uh, something chicken. i thought like something simple and yes. uh, easier uh, to make uh, so i will um, in peri peri chicken uh, yes you need uh, chicken drumsticks yes. <clears throat> Can you put your phone horizontally, please? Because you've got static. Okay. Did we lose the so connection? We have Uzma Kurdi Kamran is here. Yeah. So here, Malik. Saira Malik is here. Faiza Qureshi. Hello, beautiful ladies. Heba Ali from Canada. Okay. Salma, are you there? Salma? Salma? Hello? Hello, yeah, yeah. Can you hear? We were able to hear you a second ago. I would suggest not to change your um, phone, your, your positioning. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Salma, please do not change your positioning. All right. Just keep the phone as it is. Salma. So, can we? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. So oh, okay. I would suggest just keep, don't change your positioning. Just keep the phone okay. as it is. Okay. okay, so we'll be sharing a peri peri chicken recipe. You for that you yes. need uh, five pounds of uh, chicken drumsticks with skin. Yes, and uh, you need uh, two red onions, roughly uh, diced, uh, two large red peppers, uh, roughly diced, uh, twelve to fifteen cloves of garlic, fresh garlic. Always use fresh garlic. Garlic paste doesn't give that taste which the fresh garlic gives yes. uh, juice of two fresh lemons and uh, one tablespoon of oregano, two teaspoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of paprika. Uh, you can use paprika also. You can use cayenne pepper, uh, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, six tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. Okay. So and don't worry, guys. She is going to post the recipe later. Yes, All I right. will post that, and uh, I will post the end result also. And uh, just have these things ready. Put them in a food processor, and just make the uh, marinade paste, and marinate those chicken drumsticks in that uh, uh, paste, and uh, leave it for three to four hours. And then you can either bake or you can do barbecue. My family loves barbecue, so we do a lot of barbecue. And uh, really, really, they are uh, of great taste. It's something different from chicken tikka. So yes, uh, because is. we do a lot of barbecue, so we used to do a lot of chicken tikkas. So then my kids said, like, let's uh, find out something which we can do barbecue. And plus other it's than healthy tikka. too. It's healthy. It's so quick. It's, a, uh, it's a great, uh, you can have it with steamed vegetables. You can have it uh, with uh, coleslaw. You can have it uh, with some uh, like burgers or something. So you can use it different ways. And uh, it's not very difficult to make. So everything has to go into the food processor and there it is. Okay. So the drumsticks, um, can you show us? Is it possible that, you know, we can? Yes. Yeah, 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 please. Okay. So these are the chicken drumsticks. I yeah. have just put, like, make sure that you put some cuts on them. Okay. And then I have the things ready here. Yes. Uh, red bell pepper, yes. red onions, yes. garlic uh, cloves lemon juice yes. uh, from the fresh lemons use the olive oil yes and uh, it's a uh, pepper paprika. oregano smoked paprika all right and uh, salt and black pepper okay so would you like me to uh, yes, do it at please. the food processor yes please and uh, anna mirza is saying great achievement salma samra khalid is watching from seattle all the best for Nas Dad is here. Salam. Whenever you come to Canada, you should come and visit us. I'm definitely going to come and visit you, especially. Should, I will. You come. should come to Toronto. Inshallah. It's been years now. I have not been to Canada. It's been years. Yeah. But I will come Abba. now. I, after after many many years, I I met your father in 2019 when he came to Canada to visit Heather. I know. So it was really I great. Know. I yes, was able to it was my great. He was so happy to see you. He yeah, was, because he did I mention to me. I talk with my family a lot about my years as at PMA and um, the passing out parade, which my kids have never right. seen. So yeah, my kids haven't either. Yeah. yeah, this so is what you know, I said like to that. my... We all used to look forward. <clears throat> we did. It was like a big festival, a big deal yeah. in PMA. Whenever they were like, it was a passing out parade for the cadets. Yes. So it was okay. great to so see. So you can focus uh, on um, the food processor and show us. Can you do that? Or your phone? I don't want your phone to get disconnected. Okay, great. All right. Everything goes into the food processor. Yeah. So everything goes okay. in there. So as you are doing that, um, Salma, let's do one giveaway. All right? Yes, sure. So, yeah. And keep on doing, keep on cooking because it is going to require some time. Just to save time, you do your thing, what you are doing, and I'm just going to pose a question and people can answer. 
Okay, so the, the first giveaway is by Marjan uh, Botanicals. Uh, follow them on Instagram at Marjan Botanicals. They are giving Safeda soap and Care at Work Herbal Moisturizer. Check their website, guys, and catalog. They have amazing stuff, and the prices are extremely reasonable. Extremely reasonable. And uh, they are www.marjanbotanicals.com slash pk. Uh, okay, so the question is, what uh, is the meaning of Marjan? And this is only for people who reside in Pakistan, the giveaway. What is the meaning of Marjan? M-A-R-J-A-A-N. Marjan. Okay, so Salma, now back to you. So you're done with the food processing? Uh, yes, I'm just uh, putting in all these spices into the food processor. Okay. And would you mind uh, putting the camera on the spices so people can watch the steps? Okay, so what is the meaning of Marjan? <clears throat> And do check out their website, guys. I was, I was very impressed, and I'm certainly I am going to uh, get something from them as well. Okay, so who said it's a stone? <clears throat> yes, it is a stone. It is a stone. So we have the winner. Our winner is Anna Mirza. She is the winner. Anna, you get free Safeda soap and Care at Work Herbal Moisturizer. Anna is our winner. So, uh, Marjan, I'm going to connect you with Anna Mirza. She lives in uh, Pindi, Pakistan, and you can mail her the stuff. Congratulations, Anna. Okay, so where are we now? So I'm just putting the olive oil into the food processor. Yes. And everything is in. We will just. Peri peri chicken. I'm hungry now. And I know you have been an excellent cook. Uh, even in PMA, I remember you uh, used to do all the, the cooking and help auntie uh, most of the time. That's what I've seen you. <clears throat> and I was the total opposite. <laughs> huh? I was the total opposite doing the cycling, outdoor kid. That's what I was. Not interested in kitchen at all. <laughs> So this is the, and um, can just mix this in the chicken. Could you focus on um, the, the, the chicken, please? We, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay. You can see? Yes, now it's okay. Just leave it a little bit. If you could move a little bit further. On your right, move a little bit to, to the right. Okay. All right. Th th this is a little bit, little bit below, a little bit down. I think, uh, Salma, you will have to see yourself where to position because it's hard for me to navigate you. <clears throat> yes. Can you see now? Yes, now it is good. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is the paste. Yeah, this is the paste and you just uh, mix it with the chicken. Leave yes. it for like three to four hours. Okay. And uh, then you can just either bake it or you can grill it. So. And it, you prefer to grill it, right? We, we love, uh, we love uh, it grilled because... The taste okay. is much more better as compared to baked one. 
Awesome. So we have just the griller on our deck, just outside our uh, do uh, patio so door. It's so convenient. Yeah. Super speedy, less mess, less hassle. Grill it and healthy. Enjoy the, yeah, the lunch. So just have to just done. cut these, uh, have these things ready. Put them in a food processor. Make that paste and just uh, marinate it. So, do you have the final uh, product? Final product. I will uh, like uh, post it afterwards because you have okay. to marinate it, and then I will so you, uh, share the pictures. Grill. All right. Uh, I will share the pictures Perfect. with you. Perfect. Awesome. So, um, yes. So you have marinated the chicken, the peri peri, and either you're going to grill it or you're going to bake it. So yes, it's up to up to your taste. Awesome. That's great. All right. So um, how about um, let me just. OK, so let me ask you then. OK, could you share one cooking tip with us? A simple um, cooking tip. I, I I do a, a lot of cooking, and I I think the most important thing is that use fresh ingredients wherever possible. I always find that uh, the taste is very different when you used when you use fresh garlic or ginger even in your curries like chicken curry or anything, rather than using the bottled uh, garlic paste or ginger paste. I think uh, the taste would be much better if you uh, use fresh garlic or fresh yeah. ginger. So whenever I have time, I do keep paste. But whenever I do have time, I try that I use fresh garlic and ginger. I love it. <clears throat> Nothing can beat fresh, fresh garlic and ginger. That's and right. And the taste which you get out of fresh garlic or ginger, I think, is always great. It is great. Absolutely good. OK, Rehana Kayum is watching. Hello, enjoying. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Ana Mirza Marjan is also mentioned in the Quran. All right. So uh, your family, are they into cooking? Do they help you? The younger son is not my husband and the elder one. Uh, elder one does the grilling. So he's good at doing the elder barbecue. Elder one is army guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's the but the uh, younger one likes and he uh, pulls out some good recipes and likes to share it. All that. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, okay, Cindy Peak Montez's hair looks wonderful. I agree with using fresh when possible. Correct. All right. So the fact is that um, who invented cooking? Researchers have found that appears to be the remains of campfires made 1.5 million years ago by Homo erectus, one of the early human species. Yes. All right, so our last giveaway is by uh, Chef uh, Salma Zahid. She's also, her main page is on um, Facebook. Please follow her page, Salma Zahid. She's a public figure and she has tons and tons of followers, mashallah. And she has promoted us generously. This is the community building. If you talk about uh, building a community, then not only talking, but your actions speak louder than your words. Uh, okay, so uh, her question is, what is Salma Zahid's favorite fruit? What is Salma Zahid's favorite fruit? And she is going to give a 30 minutes of free virtual session to the winner and guide her or him uh, through the political um, uh, world, how to get into politics. You can focus on this, Salma, the, the chicken peri peri. Okay. In the oven. Okay, so you're going to bake it. All right. And how many, what's the temperature you're going to bake? Uh, 380 degree Fahrenheit. Right. Okay. Hiba Ali is here. This is such a wonderful recipe for summer barbecue parties. That's right, Hiba. We are almost in the springtime. So finger Hiba. crossed, you don't need any more snow. And the grills, keep your grills up and uh, ready Spring to grill coming. more. Yeah, yeah Hiba, Hiba has tried some of my cooking. So she Hiba lives here yeah, in Canada. So I she has tried. I uh, for a few mutual friends who have joined my stove. Yeah, Hiba is a keen cooker also. Maybe you can have her one day also. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, uh <clears throat> 
Ana Mirza has answered it actually again. She knows. <laughs> Ana Mirza has answered it again and it is mango. So Ana Mirza for this session you are the winner for both Who can resist mangoes? No Who can one resist can. Mango. So Ana Mirza you get both the giveaways mango and the skincare by Naima uh, Marjana. All right. Yes, Ana Mirza, you're right. So we are, we are going to give her. She is the winner for both the giveaways. Awesome. Okay, so Hiba Ali says, yes, she's absolutely a wonderful cook. Great. Now, um, let me just see. So what is the Diamond Jubilee Medal which you got? What was all that about? Diamond Jubilee Medal is um, uh, was uh, given to uh, Canadians in every community. About 15 uh, recipients uh, got this uh, back in 2020, 2012 uh, for the work which people have done in their communities. So yeah. I got that. It was a great honor uh, to have that uh, Diamond Jubilee Award. And I have got it framed. It is, it is hanging in my Ottawa office. So uh -huh. this was for all the work which I did in the community. Uh, uh, when I was living in downtown, I started a skating club uh, for the kids of the uh, priority neighborhoods, a reading club uh, where I brought uh, high school students to yes. read and mentor the young kids in the schools. Yes. That's amazing. And uh, for the work which uh, I did uh, to uh, for the minority women to bring their voice uh, to the hierarchy in, at different levels of the government so that their issues are heard. So Scarlett, I, the, yes. I, I, one of my passions is to make sure that the voice of the woman, minority woman, woman of color is heard and their issues are highlighted. I sit in the standing committee of the status of women and uh, I've done a lot of work uh, to make sure that the voices of our minority women are heard in decision making and in this I pandemic our that. women have been <clears throat> adversely affected yes they are so and scar scarborough is definitely a very lucky community to have you as their member of the parliament thank you so much uh, salma zahid for being on my stove and you are a true inspiration for so many women and not only women of color but uh, so many women and men as well so uh, stay tuned. Next Saturday, we have another inspirational personality on my stove. Doodles. 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 Take care.